everybody. I'm driving to my final immunotherapy infusion before surgery. Um, surgery will be next month. I'm not putting the date out publicly because there's just so much going on in the world. We don't want people knowing that we'll be away from our house, even though we'll have people watching it, um, the neighbors and everybody. It's just not a good idea to to let the world know that you'll be away and win. So anyway, I'm doing great, I'm feeling strong, I'm having digestive issues per the usual. Um, my hernia um, will be repaired at the end, so my surgeon is planning on a full CRS and HIPEC. We were uncertain about that at first, but he is planning on doing that, and then the hernia repair specialists are gonna come in after and close me up. So CRS and HIPEC number two, um, here we go, and I'm kind of mad about it because I feel really good besides, you know, the digestive issues and some pain sometimes, and I'm pretty sure I've been experiencing um, partial bowel obstructions. Um, so that's the reason why I'm going in, um, but it looks like my hernia is still pretty small, it may not even need mesh. Um, so the problem may just be I might have something else going on in there. It could be cancer. Um, we really just never know with me because imaging has never shown what was happening. So just briefly, I'll, I'll go through what has happened. So the only time imaging ever, ever picked up tumors um, was in the very beginning when I was deathly ill and I couldn't eat anymore and I ended up in the ER um, for hopefully a blood transfusion because I was so low and um, we had to kind of push them around and my mom got them to do the CT scan. So on the CT scan, they thought that I had one giant ovarian tumor, but it turned out to be both ovaries were, um, they were huge and covered in tumors. So they thought it was ovarian cancer, typical for ladies. And I went in um, to the gyne onk and he he actually pushed me he pushed me in front of another surgery because it was so urgent um, because I couldn't eat anymore and you could tell I was very very sick and close to death so when he opened me up there was just disease everywhere the entire abdominal cavity covered and he knew he what he was dealing with because he'd heard about appendix cancer and he had been um, present during a few high pec surgeries for appendix cancer patients so he knew not to mess with me too much and the only reason why he did proceed because he saw my my appendix was completely gone it was just a stump it had clearly just exploded and um he knew um he just performed a total hysterectomy on me because those tumors were the largest and they were squishing my intestines all the way over to one side which is why it hurt so much to eat so it was rather urgent um, so he performed that took the appendix of course or the stump of it and did all that for you know to make my my life better so I could get stronger again and he told us you know find an appendix cancer specialist you're gonna need CRS and HIPEC um, and sure enough when the pathology came back it was goblet cell appendix cancer so that we know from what he saw in there that I was covered in disease, like every surface. And so it was about nine months from that point to when I finally had CRS and HIPEC. And between then, I had several CT scans done and I had chemotherapy and it showed no evidence of de disease on the imaging, but we knew it was in there. So I've always been kind of a mystery. Like even after my chemotherapy, I had a laparoscopy done to look to see if it did clear the mesentery because that was my troublesome spot. And that's the one organ they can't really just cut up because it has all the blood vessels in there. So it did clear the mesentery, chemo did. So it did exactly what we needed it to do, but the cam didn't show any other disease in there and they went all along my bowel and everything. So um, that was, I think a month or two before my CRS and HIPEC. And then 
before my surgery, my CRS and high pack, my specialists put a cam in there for, you know, they do that before to make sure that it's okay to proceed. It saw nothing. It saw no disease. It looked good. Um, as soon as they opened me up, it was like, whoa. So what was expected to be a six to eight hour surgery turned into be like a 14 or 15 hour surgery plus the high pack. And I can't remember the length of time that it was because my mom exaggerates a lot and I just don't remember. So I think it was 14 hours plus the high pack. Um, so anyway, I remember my surgeon coming in when I woke up and telling me that, you know, we, we did the, you know, I put the cam in, everything looked good. We opened you up, completely different story. Um, so I'm so thankful for their team because I know that there were the in-network specialist told me that I was gonna die in so many years, but let's operate. Um, she had no faith and she was not experienced enough to deal with a patient like me in my situation and with my pathology. And I'm just so thankful for the team because at the time a lot of patients were being opened and closed right back up. So anyway, here we are, that was in 2020, now we're in 2024. This whole time imaging isn't really showing anything in there, but I'm having problems. So it's really just, I feel like I'm a can of worms about to be opened. I, it's really unpredictable with me and several other patients. Labs have never been an indicator of disease for me besides the very beginning. So we just don't know what we're gonna find. You know, um, they could open me up and I could be riddled like last time. Um, it could be really bad. This could be the end of the end for me um, or the beginning of the end for me. Um, or it, there could be nothing in there or it could just be minimal. So that's why I'm stressed out because, you know, my surgeon's honest and he tells me, you know, all these scenarios, it could be this, it could be that, it could go this way, it could go that way. And I appreciate that because I prepare for the worst and always hope for the best. So don't get me wrong. I just prepare for the worst because when I prepared for the best and hoped for the best, I was devastated. And just the way I process things, I prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So um, that's why I'm mad because I feel so good. <laughs> and I have to go into the surgery with, you know, not knowing what's gonna happen, which is true for everybody. But with me, we really don't know if this is gonna, you know, um, ruin my quality of life. And my surgeon does keep that in mind. So I'm sure if it is really bad in there, he won't operate. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm doing good, I'm really strong. I'm doing all of my my country living stuff, helping hubby with firewood because we've gotta get that done before we leave because we have wildfires around here. So we've gotta get all of our firewood stacked and out there to season for next winter. Um, we're behind on everything. Um, and when we get back from my surgery, it'll be summer and we may not be able to use the equipment to prepare the firewood then. So we're doing that now. Yes, I know I have a hernia, I'm being careful, <laughs> but I love doing that stuff. Um, so we're just taking care of stuff around the house and getting prepared for being gone for a while. And for me, honestly, the worst part always of leaving has always been leaving home and leaving my animals because my animals are my angels and they keep me, they, I literally have a cat that gives me tummy massages every night. Um, she knows exactly where it hurts because it varies. She finds the spot, she massages it in the perfect way, and then she lays down. And so she's like my nurse, and she just is so nurturing. And my dogs, too, they're just, they give me so much love. And it's really hard for me to leave them, especially for a long period of time. I just hate it. My animals and my home and my hubby are my world. Hubby is going with me, so that's great. I've got one of my really close friends who's also a patient who lives here and now we hang out all the time. We're like sisters. She's going with me as one of my caregivers and my mom and my mom's new husband. So I have care this time. Um, last time it was COVID and everybody got kicked out and I had to deal alone. I, I was honestly neglected because of all the chaos. So this time I won't be alone, but I still have trauma. So anyway, that's my brief 
10 minute update and um, I hope you all are well. And if you're going through this, please reach out, jamie at pmppals.net. Hey everybody. So I recorded a video earlier. I was going in um, for a check and to talk about my CT scan this morning and it wasn't good. So I have had progression um, I have what's now almost definitely tumors on my diaphragm, which was my worst um, area last time around. I've had progression um, on the ligament in my liver or inside the ligaments and um, I can't even think right now. I have more spots in my lungs that are suspicious to be tumors now um, when they thought they were just, you know, maybe from smoke because we heat our home with uh, a wood stove. Um, but I've had the scare with my lungs before and those spots completely disappeared. So um, it could just be from our wood stove. Um, but anyway, I just, um, I was so upset because that means that immunotherapy, I mean, it could still be helping me. It could be slowing it down, but I've had progression on it now. So, um, I decided after learning that, that I wasn't going to do immunotherapy today because surgery is next month and I just need more time to do things that I want to do. So the last minute I decided not to do immunotherapy and my oncologist agreed with me so I'm waiting for my specialist to review the scan and I'm hoping that he will proceed with high pec I know that if it's in the lungs um, that tends to be an issue um, although it is a different cavity so I'm sure knowing my specialist he will proceed with high pec um, CRS and HIPAC at this point, um, but I might possibly, and it's always been a possibility for me, also need high talk, which is um, in the thoracic and pleural cavity. So um, that's where I'm at. I'm upset. I'm mad. I'm angry that I feel so good and I have to go into surgery at all, but I know it's best now that I'm strong and I'm glad that I already had it scheduled so I don't have to wait extra long um, to get this done but I'm scared I'm a little scared so that's where I'm at um, I don't show my emotions well so you probably hear my voice wobbly but I don't like to cry in front of anybody else so I've been in town with a friend um, all morning she's very soothing and nurturing to me and peaceful and so I spent some quality time with her and I'm heading home and then I'm going to have my mental breakdown. That's how I do it. I have my mental breakdown. I process what I need to process and then I get my ass up and I do what I need to do and continue living life because we don't know how long we have, no matter what. So that's what I'm going to do and um, I've got this, right? So thanks for listening.